Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to install the new stock Intel cooler on the LGA 1700 platform. Keep watching to find out how. So, on today's video, we're going to show you how to install the stock Intel cooler. This is for the LGA 1700 socket on current 12th gen motherboards. It may well cover 13th gen as well. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like that possibly will be the case. The 13th gen will be also running on LGA 1700. I'm not a fortune teller, so I can't tell you that for sure, but yeah, potentially it is going to be okay. If you're not entirely sure what it is you've actually got, let us know in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as possible. Some of the things obviously you're going to need for this particular installation. Clearly you're going to need the stock cooler itself, a compatible motherboard. So this is a 12th gen motherboard. This is the Z690 from ASUS, the Prime P Wi-Fi. Obviously you're gonna need a processor as well. So we're gonna be using Intel's i3-12100. This actually comes with the stock cooler. Not all of Intel's processors now come with the stock cooler. So obviously if you have a different cooler, you're probably best up looking up how to do that specifically. But this is gonna be covering the push pin models. This is actually kind of like an upgrade, although in my opinion personally, it feels like kind of a side grade or even a downgrade potentially. Performance wise, this little cooler actually for that particular processor is absolutely fine and does a pretty decent job. There's a pretty decent sized copper slug on the bottom to keep things nice and cool. But I feel that the mounting mechanism isn't quite as easy as previously. And certainly when it comes to removing this cooler, that is significantly more difficult, but we'll cover that later. This video is gonna show you how to physically install the processor and the cooler to begin with. And then after we've done that, we'll show you how to remove it as well, which probably some of you may struggle with. So things we're gonna need obviously as well is thermal paste. So we're gonna be using some MX4 from Arctic. This is a really good compound to use. And obviously if you are removing the cooler, generally you are gonna to have to re replace the paste because it gets a kind of gunked up and solidifies a little bit. So certainly buying yourself a little bit of paste possibly before you even attempt to remove it is probably a good idea. Uh, links for MX4 and other compounds will be in the video description below. So let's start off first of all by installing the processor. So there is a retention lever on the side here. So what you want to do is press this down. It is actually held in place by this little retention latch there. So we're going to push down and pull across to the side at the same time and then you can release the pressure off it. Don't just let it go because it will spring and potentially could damage other components or mark the top of your heat sinks if you've got them. As you can see, it's already done that once before here. So move the latch into the fully upright position or as far as it will go. This will make it so this section here is loose. So you can just flip this up into the fully upright position. This will then show you your pins on the pin grid array here. So this is where the processor is actually going to go. So the next thing to do is to grab your processor. Like I said, in this, we're using the Intel Core i3-12100. And what you're looking for is notches, and also there's an arrow in the top corner. So this top corner is matching up with that top corner. Essentially, just make sure that the writing looks the same. So if I can get a good angle that, so you can see the writing looks upright. So as long as that writing matches up. There's lugs on the top and bottom, which match up with the lugs actually on the socket itself. So what you want to do is to get it lined up pretty much and it should just drop into the socket. There we go. Sometimes it might need a little wiggle. Just make sure that the processor is seated all the way around and it's fallen into the socket. And if you give it a little wiggle, it doesn't want to move around. You can check the notches again, top and bottom, just to make sure it's all nicely lined up. So once you've done that, you can drop the cover plate back into position. It won't go all the way down because this cover is on there, etc. So you might want to give it just a little push and you'll hear a creak. And you may find that the, uh, the top springs off or alternatively, just apply a little bit of pressure. At the same time, pulling this lever down and you'll see at the top there, that little lug just catches over the top of the two metal fingers. And then once it's in position, you can then go ahead and lower it all the way down and you'll see that the cover pings off. If it doesn't ping off altogether, you can just pull it off after. What you'll find is the actual processor is held in place by that tab there and that tab there. So that is what is holding the processor in place. So that is it. That is the processor actually installed. Obviously to remove it is the exact opposite. So like we said earlier, just lift it up. But we'll show you that fully later on. So the next thing to do is to apply a little bit of thermal paste. 
If your CPU cooler is brand new out of the box, then this won't be necessary. All I'm gonna do on this particular one is just do a tiny little blob in the complete center of the processor. Don't wanna to do too much. Now, obviously there are methods you can do here. I personally would normally do the spread method, especially if I was using an aftermarket cooler, but with the Intel stock cooler, because we've got that copper lug in the middle, which is there, that is basically perfect for when it squishes out. So in order to install the cooler, get the cable and have that into this top corner. And there are four holes in the motherboard. So let me point those out for you. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And all you do is line up the push pins with those holes. If you've got a motherboard which has got more than one or two holes, use the outermost holes that is for the new LGA. And what you can do, once you've got it slightly in position, you can if you want to, you can actually lift up the board, carefully hold the cooler onto the top, and flipping it around, you can see the plastic lugs are coming out there. They should really push out a little bit more than that, depending on the angle you're on. It does need a little bit of pressure, but I just thought I'd show you that so the plastic sections do come through. So let's flip it back over the other way. So now with it over the top, I'll give you a bit of a better angle. The camera might be a bit shaky, I do apologize for that. But what we wanna do is to push down on the pins. So do one, you'll hear it click into place, like snap into place. Then do the opposite side. And you'll hear that one snap into place as well. Might need a little bit of pressure. Then you can do one on the other sides. And then last of all, I can do the one in the bottom corner. And there we go, a little bit of pressure needed on there. It is a little bit scary, but that should do it. You'll notice at this point, you can see the actual pins themselves, these sections here. There's like a little marker in there. So that is actually how you undo them as well. So you make sure that these are actually in the clockwise position. So go around that way, twist them around that way. When they're loosened off, they should be in the anti-clockwise direction. But we can worry about that shortly. So that is effectively the cooler installed. The next thing you probably want to do is to plug in your PWM header. So this particular board is going to be in the top, so we can plug it into either CPU1 or CPU2. CPU1 is probably going to be the best one to do. So that is actually how to install it. Obviously, just plug that in, which is a bit hard for me to do from this angle. So there you go, that is it now plugged in. So in order to remove it, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to grab a flat-headed screwdriver so removal of the actual cooler is kind of the exact opposite of what we've just done. One thing you will need, a flat-headed screwdriver. This is for the actual mounting section. So what we want to do is to put it into one of these little lugs or the push pins. And we're going to turn it anti-clockwise, about 90 degrees. And you should hear the kind of click as it releases tension. And again, do it in the kind of the opposite order of what we did previously. These are really quite difficult to do because the indentations isn't very uh, prominent. So yeah, that one's come out as well. And then when you've done that, literally just grab the side with your fingers and pull up. And each one of them should pull up about five millimeters or so. And then that's gonna pull the pins back up through the plastic. So at this point now, you should be able to just remove the cooler off the top and it should come off relatively easily. If it doesn't want to come off easily, it's probably because you've used too much thermal compound and it's kind of glued itself on, in which case what you probably want to do is actually just get the CPU nice and warm and that will allow the actual paste to soften up a little bit or kind of heat it up. You're just getting it hot to make it a little bit more liquid or less solid. So that is how to take it off. Once you've done that, to get it ready to actually put back on again with these pins, because we turned them 90 degrees counterclockwise, we now need to turn them clockwise again. So just each one, just twist around about 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. And that is it. Now the cooler is ready for reinstallation. So when you push it down, those will lock in properly. If you don't, when you push the pin down, it's in this unlocked state. So the pins are gonna to wanna to come straight back up. So although it'll push in, it'll click, it probably won't stay clicked in. So just make sure you do actually turn it back so it's ready to be installed. So there you go. It's a relatively straightforward thing to do. It's uh, as long as you take a bit of time, it is a little bit 
worrying when you do have to put so much pressure through those little push pins with the stock Intel cooler. And to be fair, I would suggest for most people out there, unless you're on a really, really tight budget, I would certainly consider maybe getting another cooler. There's a lot of coolers on the market now which are compatible directly with LJ1700, uh, such as the Deepcool AK400 is a really good choice if you're on a relative budget, but you want some really good cooling performance. Obviously get the cooler which is suitable for your particular processor. Higher TDB, it's gonna want a higher, more beefy cooler. But anyway, hopefully that's gonna help you guys out if you're installing your new Intel processor on your 12th gen platform. Any comments or questions, let us know in that comment section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.